Stafford Police Department. Lines being recorded though, Sean. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. Uh, it's Retrieve View Circle. Um, the best address I can give you is 111 Retrieve View Circle. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around looking about. Okay, and this guy, is he white, black, or Hispanic? He looks black. On the evening of February 26, 2012, an unarmed 17-year-old African-American named Trayvon Martin was shot and killed by a white and Hispanic man named George Zimmerman. At the time, Zimmerman was 28 years old and part of his neighborhood watch. Just before this occurred, Martin purchased a snack and drink from the local convenience store. Shortly after, Zimmerman saw Martin walking home in the rain and called the police to report a suspicious person. While Zimmerman was talking to the dispatcher, he was advised not to pursue Martin, but chose to do so anyways. Moments later, Martin knows he was being followed and confronted Zimmerman. This led to a physical altercation between the two, ultimately ending with Martin being shot and killed. Approximately one minute later, the police arrived on the scene. When Zimmerman was questioned, he claimed self-defense, and with not enough evidence to contradict this claim, Zimmerman was not initially arrested. Eventually, Zimmerman was charged with second-degree murder, but got acquitted in court. This ruling was extremely controversial, as many believe Zimmerman was acting out of racially motivated hate. Join me as I examine the case that started the Black Lives Matter movement. In order to get a better idea of what actually happened, I interviewed an expert on the matter. Hello, Dr. Chung. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Of course. Thank you for having me. So I understand you have a PhD, is that correct? I have a PhD minor in Comparative Studies in Race and Ethnicity. Alright, so how familiar are you with the Trayvon Martin case? I'd say I'm very familiar with it. In order to understand the case, I've been studying its history and comparing it to other cases. Okay, so based on your research, do you feel as though the initial court ruling was justified? Absolutely. There wasn't enough evidence to convict Zimmerman of second-degree murder. In order to be convicted of that, it has to be without a reason of doubt that he acted out of hate. So what do you think was Zimmerman's frame of mind leading up to and during the event? I think he simply wanted to ensure his own safety by whatever means necessary. Does that mean you believe that following Martin was the best thing to do for his own safety? I don't believe that Zimmerman should have pursued Martin. It would have been in his best interest not to follow when he had already called the police. Then why did Zimmerman ignore the dispatcher's orders? Zimmerman was a neighborhood watch in the area. I believe he felt obligated and responsible as a member to protect his community. So do you think that a member of the neighborhood watch should do more than just report crimes? I do. Neighborhood watches are supposed to work with law enforcement to prevent and deter crimes within their own communities. Alright. Why was Zimmerman not initially arrested by the police? This is due to the Stand Your Ground law, which allows one to use lethal force if they feel as if their life is in danger. Do you believe Zimmerman got off easier because he's white? No. In comparison with similar cases involving Stand Your Ground laws, both minorities and whites have been released from charge. Grayson Garcia was a minority released from his charges after he stabbed and killed Pedro Rotetta due to the same laws and reasons as Zimmerman. Do you believe that the standard ground law is an important factor in this case as well? Yes, I do. It justifies Zimmerman's decision to use his firearm. Does the standard ground law still apply if the defendant provoked the victim? No. The defendant cannot provoke the other party. Then do you think that Zimmerman provoked Martin? Zimmerman did confront and approach Martin with slight hostility. However, Martin was the one who escalated the conflict to get physical. And what injury did Zimmerman sustain from the fight between him and Martin? Zimmerman sustained head injuries, lacerations, and bruises. Is this enough for Zimmerman to reasonably believe his life was in imminent danger? Yes. Through the injuries that Zimmerman sustained, it was clear to me and the jury that he used a weapon in order to protect his own life after being beaten down by Martin. Alright, that was very informative. Thank you for your time. Of course. Thanks for having me. After all of this, I still wasn't satisfied with my research, so I interviewed another expert on the subject with a vastly different opinion and asked him some more questions I had asked Dr. Chong. Hello, Dr. Scott. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Of course, Ethan. Thank you for having me. So how did you gain your knowledge on the case? Well, I graduated from Duke with a PhD major in Comparative Studies in Race and Ethnicity and a minor in Ethnic Studies. So these kinds of cases have just always been on my radar. Well, I'll get right into the first question. Based on your studies, do you believe the court ruling was justified? Not at all. The evidence showed that Zimmerman's use of deadly force does not coincide with the injuries he sustained. So you don't believe Zimmerman should have used this firearm? 
not even a little. He followed Martin and got himself into that. He was armed, so why did he try to pursue Trayvon, who could potentially be armed himself, if not with the intention of using his firearm? It just seems a little premeditated. Do you think Zimmerman following Martin can be seen as an act of provocation? I do. Who follows somebody that could be dangerous? He most likely made Trayvon uncomfortable. Okay. So what do you think was Zimmerman's frame of mind leading up to and during the event? He was afraid and full of a deep hate that stemmed from not understanding. He definitely acted out of prejudice whether he knew it or not. Have there been any previous cases of him acting out of prejudice? Absolutely. When his neighborhood watch was first established, Zimmerman made frequent reports of other suspicious people, all of which were black men. Do you believe prejudice was the reason Zimmerman ignored the dispatcher's orders? Oh, without a doubt. He was racially profiling Martin and just wanted to play hero and prove he was right. Play hero? I mean, he went out of his way to make a decision he didn't have to make. He just wanted to act like an authority figure. Alright, so what injury did Zimmerman sustain from the fight between him and Martin? He had a bloody nose and two lacerations to the back of his head. Could these have potentially been life-threatening? Definitely not. Even a medical official deemed Zimmerman's injuries insignificant. Okay, do you believe Zimmerman got off easy because he's white? Absolutely. He wasn't even arrested at first. You know, if it were a black male who had killed a white male, he would have been in handcuffs as soon as the police showed up. Well, that was definitely helpful. Thank you for your time. Thank you for hearing me out. After reviewing the footage of the interviews, I compared what Dr. Chung and Dr. Scott have told me. Although I asked them similar questions, almost none of their responses seemed to align with each other's. They disagreed on the ruling, with Dr. Chung stating that it was justified and Dr. Scott stating that it was not. When I asked if Zimmerman provoked Martin, which would have nullified the use of the standard ground law, Dr. Chung said that he did not, while Dr. Scott believes that he did. Dr. Chung thinks that Zimmerman followed Martin and ignored the dispatcher's orders for the safety of his neighborhood, but Dr. Scott believes he acted out of prejudice. Although they both gave a similar description for the injuries Zimmerman sustained, Dr. Chung thinks they could have been fatal and warranted the use of the firearm, while Dr. Scott believes they were insignificant, therefore making Zimmerman's use of his gun unnecessary. With so much contradicting information, I wanted to see how the general public interpreted it. So I decided to set up another interview with somebody I hadn't yet considered, an editor from the Washington Post. Hello, Manuel. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, getting into the first question, what exactly would you say was the media's role on Zimmerman's trial? Throughout Zimmerman's trial, the media was trying to introduce racial components into the case, thus bringing the case to national attention. And was the media successful at this? I'd argue they were, since Zimmerman was getting backlash from the public about being racist. So do you think that Zimmerman's actions were racially motivated? Not at all. He acted out of self-defense. Most media outlets would argue otherwise, so why do you disagree? Well, Zimmerman sustained some injuries from the fight between him and Martin that led him to act in self-defense. In your opinion, were those injuries life-threatening? Yes. Okay, how did the media portray Martin? The media portrayed Martin as an innocent young African-American who had a bright future, but was hunted down and murdered. So do you think that idea was inconsistent with who Martin really was? Yes, the media did mention that Martin wasn't all an innocent boy, but was actually a delinquent who regularly got suspended from school for drug possession. And how was Zimmerman portrayed? The media portrayed George Zimmerman as a racist, privileged white man who killed a black teen and was able to get away with it. Does this coincide with who he actually was? Not at all. He was a neighborhood watch volunteer whose intentions were simply to protect his community and acted within his legal rights due to Florida's stand your ground law. Did the media have an agenda when using President Obama's comment on Trayvon Martin? They used it to legitimize their claims about the case being racially motivated. How would using his commentary legitimize their claim? His qualifications and status as a black leader of the United States bolstered their argument. What was President Obama's response to the media using his comment? President Obama did not object to the media using his comment to push their agenda, but rather allowed it to happen. Do you believe this affected how the general public developed their opinion on the case? Absolutely. The public believed that Trayvon Martin was an angelic boy who was wrongfully killed, which was consistent with how the media portrayed him. All right. Thank you for your perspective on this case. Of course. Thank you for having me. After compiling the research I'd done, I've come to the conclusion that there was simply not enough evidence to convict Zimmerman of second-degree murder, and thus he was acquitted accordingly. Unfortunately, the media spread misinformation about the case, causing the general public to disregard many of its factors, instead choosing to focus primarily on potentially race-related aspects. This sparked the Black Lives Matter movement and brought up uncomfortable conversations about race in America. 
Although the court ruling was at the very least just and fair, Zimmerman's actions were not those of a hero nor of the average civilian. While he may not have necessarily been found guilty, that does not make him innocent.